Today we are installing radiant floor heating in this 1200 square feet utility building. We are using half inch oxygen barrier packs and tying it to the rebar using zip ties. It took a couple of hours for four of us to finish. This included installation of pipes and tying them to the rebar. As per heat loss design calculations, we are spacing half inch tubing 12 inches center to center. Since most of the heat loss is near outside walls, we are spacing these pipes 6 inches center to center inside the entire perimeter of the building, often called hot loop. There are two types of radiant heat design patterns, counterflow spiral and serpentine. In counterflow pattern, supply and return run next to each other. We are using serpentine method because this method is used when most of the heat loss happens along the walls, which is the case in this building. Temperature of this entire building will be monitored by a single thermostat. Because there are no separation walls, it does not make sense to make multiple zones. When I say zone, it basically means a single thermostat monitoring temperature in a given area. Just like this zone, most of the zones consist of multiple pipe loops. When installing half inch PEX tubing, maximum length of the pipe loop cannot exceed 300 feet. What it means is when hot water will travel 300 feet in half inch PEX tube, it will lose enough heat that it won't be able to heat up your space as efficiently. These tubes have foot markings on them, so that they can be installed while measuring their length. We always buy a 1000 feet pipe coil and make 4 loops of 250 feet each. In our opinion, it's the best length for a single loop. You will end up with same length of loops and zero wastage. Another question that is often raised here is, do all the loops need to be of same length? The answer is yes. I'll give you an example to explain the reasoning behind this. Let's say you have one loop of 300 feet and another of 200 feet. The shorter loop will have less resistance and will have more water flow than the longer loop, which will result in uneven heat. If your loops are uneven, you should consider balancing valves. Once all the pipes were installed, we tied them to the rebar approximately every 18 inches. This will ensure that the pipe won't float to the top of the finished concrete. Also we cut off all the extra tails of zip ties so that none of them will come out of the concrete. Installing radiant heating on rebar is a bit harder than installing on wire mesh because it's elevated from the floor insulation. You need to be careful during installation as stepping on pipes will kink them and you will have to redo the entire loop. That's all for today's video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.